Hey everyone, how are we doing out there today? This is the Flip Flop Investor Show, and I am your host, Todd Bayer, the Flip Flop Investor himself. For those of you that don't know, we get together every single week. We talk about real estate investing here in the Inland Empire, and uh, really we talk about real estate investing anywhere that it applies. Uh, of course, we're not attorneys or anything like that, so don't take anything we say too seriously until you talk to your financial advisors and attorneys uh, uh, regarding whatever we're talking about, because that would make you crazy. If you listen to our advice and take it and do whatever you want with it and then say I'm at fault for best for losing you money or something. So, you know, always check with your people. I don't know why I'm saying that. But anyway, this week, uh, every week, in fact, we get together and talk to a local expert, somebody who knows the real estate industry very, very well. And uh, this week we have an awesome guest, uh, an author. You know, and the author of Master Vacation Rentals, Jeff Pierce. How are you doing today, Jeff? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah? A pretty good day so far, right? Not bad. Not bad. Not um, too bad. <laughs> no major systems in the houses um, broke. Well, that's good. No customers have complained yet. So, so that's good. good. Well, it's getting ready for the weekend. So this is the point where sending out the, the text that they're going to see the, the host or the um, – the, uh, the property manager is going to let them in and, yeah. you know, what time they're coming and what kind of fees they need to bring for the pool heat and things like that. Oh, right. So, yeah, it's about to be go time. Right now it's like the, the quiet. The, the yeah, it's the lull. <laughs> although, although this is when we get to do maintenance. So we're making sure there's toilet paper and shampoo and the major systems in the house are, are working. We've got some rain coming, so we did some roof patching today. Okay, fun. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of reality involved with this. Yeah, well, it's good that, well, actually, I shouldn't say it's good because roof patching in the wintertime is like the worst time for a roof patch. <laughs> is your roofer giving you a good rate on your roof patches? You know, a very fair deal. No complaints. Okay, well, that's good. In case they're listening, it was a very fair deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you get someone to show up, it's a win. That's true. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, God. I, being, being around the industry long enough. And just, if, if the patch doesn't hold... I did my due diligence. I tried. That's true. You did. Yeah, and it only rains five days a year in Palm Springs. So really, is that the is that the average? That's what they say. Yeah, it's a lie, though. It's a lie. <laughs> I don't think. I've, you know what? No, you know what? I did. I did go out there one day when it was raining. Not that bad though. It was just kind of sprinkling. Yeah, but I don't think it was in the summertime. <laughs> I think I the quote I've heard is we get 360 days of sun a year. That's. I mean. That's pretty amazing if but that's, that's a lie. the case, but it's a lie. <laughs> have you like have you ever actually broken it down to what it really is? I don't know. It's it's whenever it's really whenever my folks or family visit it it rains. It rains on every them. single time. Yeah, yeah. So. And they're like, "Why do you live here?" <laughs> it's so dreary and rainy all the time. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have to hear you complaining, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. All right. So, Master Vacation Rentals. I mean, this is a good book. I Thank actually you. read the book, you know, and you're the first author we've actually had on the show. Wow. First, first author that wanted to admit that they were an author, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, um, I, I was looking for a project last year because um, I had finished my third vacation rental, getting that off the ground. And okay. I was just kind of stewing and like, whoa, what am I going to do? Yeah. And I was looking for a project, and I've, I've done a lot of projects before in um, really with Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and working with different startups. And I was mulling over. I'm like, well, you know, do I want to do a billing app or, you know, what kind of app do I want to do? And okay. I, was, I was thinking and thinking. And it so happened I had just put um, my house in uh, Paso Robles on the market or on, on the Airbnb market. And we were, we were getting guests and things like that. And we were testing out the new crew. So there were some, some housekeeping issues with, okay. with the housekeepers. And my property manager that's, that's up there full time. She goes over the house whenever we have issues and things like that. And, she, and, you know, she was kind of blowing it off like, well, it's no big deal, right? I said, Linda, read my reviews. Yeah. So she read the reviews. She goes, oh, I get it. And then she said, you're a star. <laughs> I'm like, well, I have good reviews. And I was like, you know what? I guess I do know this. So why, doesn't, why don't I make my project about something that I've been living day in and day out and do something I know? Right. So that's, that, was, uh, that was last year, um, December 28th exactly. So it's been about a year since I had the thought. We went to press in September. We launched in October, and um, I met you guys in November. Yeah, you came so, to the investment club. Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. And uh, it's it's. It's been a good ride. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's cool. I mean, I'm glad you came because, you know, we had, 
a guy that came to the club. He was sort of our short-term Airbnb mentor. This guy, you know, he came a lot, but he's uh, he's been working on projects down in Mexico and hasn't been coming to the club, which... You know, if you're going to be a mentor to the people in the in the audience in the club, you know, you got to be present and you know actually be available to help mentor people. So, you know, he doesn't know this yet, but we're probably going to be swapping him out with somebody new as the uh, as the short term rental uh, mentor. <laughs> and if my tires get slashed, I'll, I'll know. <laughs> yeah, we'll know who it was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I I think he understands because you know you, there's there's sort of a, a level of you know if you want to help people and like actually put together resources to help people, especially in something like short term rentals. Uh, it's a very, you know, it's a very difficult uh, place to navigate if you don't know what you're doing. So having a, a guide to sort of say, you know, nah, here's the channel you want to stay within. You know, let's just keep your boat going that way. You know, that's sort of uh, you got to be present for that. And so having him being gone has been kind of tough because, you know, every month at the club, we're always saying, you know, and, you know, here's the list of mentors. Here's the people that are mentors in the club that are here to help you and your business. And you know, here's this guy, but he's not here. So <laughs> sorry, you know. And, uh, yeah, it'd be good to have somebody that's at least there that can answer people's questions because. And the questions do roll in. And it's great because uh, yeah. I learned, too. I mean, people ask really thought-provoking questions right. and, and things that I learn from. And, and spe especially at the club, a lot of people have a real financial slant. So mm -hmm. they're, they're asking, like, well, rules of thumb on percentages and things like that. I'm like, don't know. Yeah. Don't know. I can tell you that my houses all have toilet paper right now. And, right. You know, I could tell you that the roof has been patched and things like that. But, you know, they ask these um, financial questions and I then I go back and I figure it out. And it's like, but I, I know that the numbers are working. So that's right. That's the main thing. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, you know, when you get into something like Airbnb, the first people that get into it are sort of like those pioneers. Right. The people that are like, you know, this is just awesome. I'm just going to do it. You know, and you just jump in and do it. And, you know, the, the whole, like, financial model, building out a prospectus and all this, like, things that people probably want you to do, if you were to go for, like, some major funding round or something and try to, you know, buy 100 properties at once, they're going to want to see some, you know, financial model that makes financial sense and all this stuff. But when you're just like, I just believe in this thing, I want to see it happen, you're just going to go and take part and do it. You know, and, and the, the, the financial stuff comes a little bit later sometimes where, you know, maybe you're like, okay. You know, it looked like it was going to make sense. You obviously did it because you thought it was a, a sound investment. But also, it wasn't probably, like, boiled down to the most minute thing at the very beginning where you're like, okay, here's all the things that are going to cost me money. You know, they're going to use 1.3 toilet paper rolls per stay. You know, like, you don't break it down to that level at the very beginning. But now that you've been doing it a while, like, you probably break it down quite a bit more than that. Well, a lot of it's still pretty organic. You. you Sometimes you run out of stuff, but you try to keep you try to keep a stock room. In fact, uh, my my place in Paso Robles, I say that the garage is a mini Smart and Final. Okay. So I <laughs> I, I hate running out of stuff. Yeah. Um, this week, actually, the housekeeper said I'm out of bleach. I'm like, I cannot go to the store right now and right. run and get you a bottle of bleach. So I I did the uh, Smart and Final app and had a whole truckload of stuff nice. delivered so yeah. yeah yeah i was gonna say because there's like some new things out there like instacart there's some other apps you could use to like have things delivered to the yeah, house yeah those are your friends yeah you, you've got to make use of of all those tools amazon prime and exactly you know. so do you have certain things on a subscription like that where you know like coffee no pot it's all or? it's all seat of the pants uh, thank you for mentioning the coffee pot yeah so i've <laughs> contradicted myself in the book i say have extra coffee makers extra coffee pots yeah so i had one um break and you know they always break or the guests find out in the morning so it's morning for them right. it's morning for me yeah i'm finding out that they're not having coffee and i'm thinking wow not to have coffee that's <laughs> pretty extreme let me drop everything and get them a new coffee maker right so now instead of getting the coffee a, crafts are like they're not cheap either yeah and, and finding it in the garage or you know i mean it's just a hassle right so now i contradicted the book okay official contradiction the metal ones Buy the metal coffee carafes. Yeah, metal. Yeah, and their metal's a better conductor anyway, right? They uh, keeps your coffee warm. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and you know, and I could prove myself wrong too. I might end up going back to something else or the Keurigs. You never know. But Keurig, yeah. That's a little advanced. I myself, I hate the Keurig coffee. I don't like it. You can only make one cup at a time, right? Well, and they have the ones you can make like a mini carafe or something oh. like that. But even that, I, the coffee comes out, it doesn't taste as good as like a drip coffee would. Or, you know, I prefer pour over when I do coffee, but it's, you know, it, it's just not the same. One well, the thing is with guests, you really have to go with what, I don't want to say lowest common denominator, but 
people have trouble. I have trouble with Roku. So, yeah. you know, and then Keurig's, <laughs> not everyone is Keurig proficient. So we right. go with the drips. Yeah, you'd have to put the put together a nice little list of like all the instructions, like you know, remove old old right. K cup, you know, put in new K cup, make sure there's water in there, press and then the it's still hope for the best. Right, exactly. Make sure you have a cup there when you press the go button, because if you don't, it's just gonna go everywhere over the counter. Yeah, been there, yeah. done that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, the coffee pots are probably just better. Most people probably know how to use a drip coffee machine if they drink coffee. Yeah, yeah. and and all these details though, the, the at the end of the day. You want to get a good review. Yeah. And you get the good review, you get more guests, you give them good service, you get more good reviews, you get more business, you get repeat business. And yeah. Really, the, it's all about the reviews. And, you know, when I get a really good review, it's, it's good that it's a good financial model and mm -hmm. it's given me flexibility, financial flexibility, and, and it's interesting and right. I enjoy the hospitality aspect of it. But when you have a satisfied guest, they let you know it. Yeah. They really, really, really do. And in the book, I have guessed that their public comments are glowing. And then, thankfully, they're pretty nice. In the private comments, they say this, this, and this, and this, and this was wrong. Yeah. And I learned from all those things. Right. And um, so that's, that's the nice thing about being on a social platform. Yeah. That uh, you do get the feedback, and um, you can get rewarded for it. Yeah. And there's, you know... Uh, one, th one thing I noticed you focus on, which, you know, Patrick Diamond, the guy that, you know, he was also the, he's the current mentor of the, the short-term rentals in the club, but Patrick, his, his emphasis and yours as well is the guest experience, yeah. you know, it's, and, that's, and that's really what you need to focus on. So many people, I think, are focusing too much on, like, I can make some really good money on this, you know, they're, they're focusing so much on that, they cheap out in some areas, and they don't spend the time or the money to really think about how you'd use it. And the example you gave in the book about towel uh bars how your the towel bars you had mounted to like just the drywall and not properly anchored and they weren't plugged they weren't drilled into studs you know if you own the home and you use the home on a regular basis you'll know don't hang anything heavy from that towel rack just put the washcloths on there or whatever right you know but the person coming in your home doesn't know that little nuance about your house so they're gonna hang their kid on there you know the kids are gonna hang on it and the towel bar is gonna come right off the wall exactly which is i'm probably sure is about what happened in your case and that for that but uh you know it's those little things like every single thing you you know about your house to be an issue or you know a hack or something like that somebody coming in is not going to know that right off the bat so you know talk a little bit about like walking through your house like with a new fresh set of eyes and thinking about how to use your house you know as as a guest would yeah and, and th that's a good point and that comes to when you when you take the pictures for your listing and you do the captions mm -hmm. you really do have to paint a picture of what they could do in the house right. versus this is what's here yeah, you want to say yes. We have a kitchen with a Kenmore washer, and yeah. you know, you you want to say wonderful galley kitchen, entertain. You know, big pantry, all the cooking gear you would need for us. Smell the sizzling bacon. There you, you know, go. Whatever you want. There yeah. you go. Paint a picture. P please put on the fan if you you cook bacon. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The like smoke that. detector doesn't like you cooking bacon, but <laughs> yeah, and you know that gets into then the. Uh, all the communication that you have to have within the house, because I have, you know, I have a, I have a window in Paso Robles again, that if you pull it too hard, it kind of comes off the track. Okay. And, and then you, you got to figure out how to get back on there. Yeah. So it says, you know, please open gently. Right. You know, just a, just a little, little sticker there. So I'm sure you don't get many calls then from the Paso Robles property that say, Hey, I pulled the door open and it, you know, <laughs> fell off the track. You probably don't get calls about that anymore. Right. No, and I was the one that used to always take it off the track. Oh, really? <laughs> so, and that's another thing is to test your own place out. Yeah. Yeah, so it's always great to test your own place out and show up unexpectedly. You can see how housekeeping left it. Right. And, you know, just find things, not that you're finding fault, but test it out yourself and find those nuances because, and I'm glad that Patrick uh, thinks the same thing, but it, it is the customer's always right, the customer's the guest. Mm -hmm. And our, our motto at Master Vacation Rentals is uh, we're making the guest experience better by helping hosts to be better. Yeah. So that's that's what we want. We yeah. want hosts to be better so the guests can have a better better experience, and that's that's that, what it's all about. Sure. I mean, and you think about a hotel. You know, if you were to go stay in a hotel, you know, if you show up and the bathroom isn't clean, 
or you know the bed hasn't been made or you know it's something like that you, you're, you're gonna you're gonna complain that's an obvious thing that you know to be an issue like when you go to a hotel but like my first guest ex- my first experience as a guest uh staying in an airbnb we had got this condo uh this girl had out in uh hollywood because we went out there to some conference and sounds fun yeah like you know <laughs> well she had this condo and you know she wasn't going to be there it was just going right? to be like it was me and my partner steven we were staying in the in the condo uh just for a night you know it's all the time we were going to be out there but you know we go in and like it was very much her house mm. you know what i mean like this was very much her place she was she was actually out of the country. That's why she was renting it out on Airbnb at that time. But, you know, we go in and it was very much her home. And I was like, there was no no instruction. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what was fair game. Could we cook with her cookware? Oh, I see. You know, could right. we? Like, is it okay if we leave dishes in the sink? You know, like, like you know, I had no idea. Like, she had a TV. Like, there's no, like, I, we didn't even know where one of the remotes was. You know, like, so we're, we're trying to, like, do we, can we watch TV? Can we turn on her? She had an Xbox, you know, can we turn on the Xbox? Like, you know, what are the restrictions here? We didn't know. And, you know, I also, I thought it was strange, too. I, I actually said this on, on the, uh, the show a few times, like, a few weeks ago. But, like, I go into the bedroom, and I'm unpacking my suitcase. I pull open the drawer, and there's, like, all of her underwear sitting. I'm like, okay, we're not using this dresser, I guess. So I just left everything in the suitcase. Because it was the wrong size? Yeah, it was just, I wasn't going to be able to fit into it. She was like, oh, okay. smaller than me. That oh, was, okay. yeah, all that right. was the problem. I see. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to, like, take everything out of her drawer and put my stuff in, you know. But you, you bring up a good point. It's, you have to detach yourself. It's not your house anymore. Right. It, it's the guest's. It's for the guests. Right. And we go through this in the book. You should reflect, you know, for Palm Springs, obviously it's, you know, mid-century modern's big, architecture's Mm -hmm. big, Sinatra's big, things like that. Yeah. Have some coffee table books out that, you know, take people back to that type of a vibe. Sure. and, And things like that, you know, just put people into the environment that they're in right they're coming out there for that most likely anyway you know or at least that's a that's an element of what they're coming there for right so let's say you're a trekkie okay you're not going to decorate your house even if you know your personal place you might have right trekkie paraphernalia and gear all over the place or you know what have you right don't do that yeah Unless you're creating, like, unless your house looks like, you know, the the Starship Enterprise or something. <laughs> and, okay. And people are coming for that particular That would experience. be thematic, and that's that's allowed. And that's, yeah, that's a themed, you know, it's, it's a theme park. You're going that's to approved. Like, yes. there, was a, there was a hotel I stayed at in Zurich, Switzerland, called the Zigzag Rock Hotel. Oh. And so every single room in the hotel was modeled after a band or a, or a rock oh, group nice. of some kind. Nice. So I stayed in one, and I, I cannot remember the name of the person whose room I was in, and uh, like, the entire list of people on there I've heard of, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, all these bands I've heard yep, of, yep. you know, and I'm in this this room of some guy I've never, ever heard of, and it's the only one on the list. I'm like, why am I in this guy's room? I have no clue who this is. But, but see how they made something out of nothing. You could have been in room 12, right? right? But instead, they gave it some character, and we, yeah, it's in the book, and that's one of the houses um, we have them named after Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, mm-hmm. Audrey Hepburn, um, Sophia Loren. Okay. And then uh, the bar is the James Dean bar. Oh, cool. So it's all fun, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all, you know, Palm Springs history, you know. Exactly, exactly. And we refer to the rooms as those names when we say, okay, well. In the Maryland this, row room. This crisis is happening in this room and, you know. Yeah. And, and then, you know, you like everybody on the team obviously knows they know where the which, issue is. Exactly. They, they know which, which room is uh, in need of something. Right, yeah. Which is good. I mean, you know, it's it's all about systems. I'm a big systems person. You know, I always like to make sure, you know, everything kind of falls into its place. And, you know, it, it's nice, especially when you think of a hotel room. I mean, every single time they make the room up for a new guest, it's going to be exactly the same. You know, and every single standard is exactly, I mean, even down to the way the magazines are laid out on the table, you know, they, they're it's identical. You're going to see it across every room in the hotel after one of the maids is done in there with minor variations, just, you know, the way they fold the toilet paper, you know, like, <laughs> Right. Like that's the last thing or the way they fold the towel. I, you know, those are the things that might change slightly, but at least the towel is going to be clean. You know that, you know. Right. Yeah. The aesthetics are important, but so are the functional things like having the certain number of towels in the right. rooms and, and all that. And that's, you know, and I think that's the hard thing that Airbnb has to overcome for a lot of people is that, you know, you don't know what, what you're going to get when you show up to these places. Okay. Great point. Because yeah. a lot of, I get a lot of questions. People are like, do you have pots and pans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're laughing because you know I do, right? right. And it's, well, it's, I know you do. But it, yeah. It's ready to go, right? I mean, really, you just need to 
show up. You do need to bring your own beverages and, and things like that. Sure, yeah. You don't have, in the James Dean bar, it's not fully stocked it, ready it for you to just not, tap well, into. guests do leave things, but um, I think housekeeping might pick that up and yeah. and enjoy it either. It was probably empty anyway, right? Yeah. Or it, close enough where probably. nobody's going to notice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, having having all that that ready for them is, is very important. Yeah, so the... Uh, the the check in process for people, you know, also some sometimes a bit of a mystery. Like I I know the first time we'd ever stayed in Airbnb, you know, the girl, she had a it was a concierge desk down in the in the bottom of this condo unit, so they had the key. Oh, that's wonderful. She had it worked out with them, you right. know, which was good. But uh, I've heard of a lot of you know strange guest experiences getting the key or getting access to the property, you know. But uh, how do you how do you handle it? do you handle it with like a lockbox or how's your general way of doing it? We have lockbox when we have, there's a couple of ways. In Paso Robles, we are not obligated to do a personal check-in, and that house is pretty easy just to give people the lockbox mm-hmm. code. In fact, Airbnb lists us, I think, 100% of, you know, the last, so many guests said that there was no problem with, with access. Okay. So they have cleanliness, location, and access. Yeah. Those are parameters that they've started putting on, on the listing. So I was happy to see that. And um, so generally, was, people can let themselves in there. Palm Springs, we are obligated to do a personal check-in. Okay. And we that's were, a city ordinance. That's a city ordinance. And we were already doing personal check-ins on one of the houses just because there's an alarm we want to show them where the fruit picker is, which in the book we say that's not a person. It's it's a thing on a stick where yeah. you can, you know, twist the lemons off the right. tree. <laughs> and we show them all that type of stuff, right? You know, where the pool light is and, and things like that. So sure. it does need kind of that level of attention to take someone through the house and show them around. And yeah. we're, we're, we usually are able to, no one comes at 3 a.m., so we're usually able to do the personal check-in. Just walk them in and... You know, are you also at that same time doing like a, a pre check in? Like, are you looking and, and saying, okay, everything's in this condition? Are you having them sign no. anything at that point? Well, the, ci- the city has a sign a form that they understand all the rules, which, which is good. And we collect yeah. their signatures. And this is new for Palm Springs. Relatively new, yeah. That, that ordinance came into effect, I want to say, two years ago, a year yeah. and a half ago. And it's, it's pretty pretty regimented if i had known all these rules when i first started i'm not sure if uh, <laughs> it would have been a little daunting but um yeah it, it's all to protect uh as you know we beat the there was a vacation rental I, you might not know but we there was a proposed vacation rental ban in palm springs yep and it just got the it's got down yeah in yeah the most we, election yeah in uh yeah the june 5th primary and we we banded together and you know educated folks um and I was on the visibility committee. So that means oh, okay. I, I was at the grocery store, that pest handing out flyers <laughs> and, and we were, yeah, we were flyering people and what else? Uh, phone bank. So just old school getting the educating. Yeah, I mean, getting really, the word out. Yeah. We we're getting the word out and we did beat it 30, uh, well, 70 to 30%. Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good margin. It, it was a pretty good margin. And the thing is, I understand the other side. Right. I, I do. Cause noise, it was about mostly about noise and parking, mostly noise. And right. No one likes noise. I don't like noise because I live in Palm Springs too. And, yeah. You know, I don't, in certain times of day, I really don't like noise, right? Right. Especially after, you know, nine, 10 o'clock at night when, you know, you hear some bass coming from down the street or something. Ex- exactly. So I understood where all that came from. But as, as that resentment was coming to a head, thankfully the, the ordinance was getting put in place and, you know, number of infractions and complaints have, have gone down precipitously. So that's good. I, we've got a, I think a good equilibrium now and um, you know, everyone's getting along and, and behaving. And you know, I always say there are plenty of bars to scream at. If you, <laughs> right. if you're so inclined, you're, you're more than welcome. Yeah. And they, they would love the, uh, the noise I'm sure. Cause yeah, they make the bar more popular. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and you know, that's, that's kind of the balancing act, right? You have you know, you have a commercial operation within a residential area. Right. So for the people that probably bought those homes maybe 30, 40 years ago, you know, they've been living there for many, many years and it was never a vacation rental. Correct. You know, now you got this new thing. It's a nuisance in the neighborhood. Right. You know, all the NIMBYs, you know, all the, the not in my backyard people out right, there. Right, right. You know, they're, they're, they're like, oh, great. They're going to have parties there every night, you know, and it's going to be a nuisance. Uh, you know, I have to deal with all these new cars showing up all the time. Like some people are comfortable with the fact they know who's who drives what car. 
car down the street and they can they know who their neighbors are and all that stuff at any one time but it's tough for them i think for to adapt sometimes to the you know the changing environment that airbnb is kind of created for some areas and and what we do though is not only in our listing or the rules and we say our biggest new uh rule is the noise i mean right. that's what's going to get the cops called that's that's what's going to create right create drama and we have that in our listing depending on the group and the whatever they're celebrating i'll send them a text before they come and then of course they're they see the form when they come about how many guests are allowed to stay at night how many daytime guests how many cars can park mm -hmm. and what the noise is there's no amplification of noise 24 7 yeah so you can't play a radio outside <laughs> and after that's new i didn't know that one yeah and after i don't know why i'm forgetting i think it's 10 after 10 a.m you can't hear any noise even talking can't emanate from your house to, okay. to your neighbor's house so close your windows close the doors you know yeah if you're going to have a conversation inside keep it keep yeah. it down even you know or if you're out so you can you know you can be outside but you know just keep it down right I mean, it's it's all common sense but yeah you have to legislate <laughs> and spell and out it, common sense and it depends on who your most you know your, your closest neighbors you know who they are too and i'm sure you know you have probably reached out to them all individually and have explained to them this is a vacation rental house and they understand and i'm sure if they have an issue you'd probably re re prefer that they would call you first about it exactly exactly and fortunately one of the, one of the houses is in a neighborhood that it's a lot of vacation rentals yeah and that's one thing you should do our first step of the, of the book is fantastic finds and mm -hmm. really understand what your local ordinances are yeah and what's your neighborhood like is are there a lot of airbnbs already are there mm -hmm. a lot of second homes that's a pretty good place maybe to think about having a vacation rental right versus you know are there basketball hoops and swing sets and you <laughs> yeah. know is, is it like a lot deep? of families yeah. yeah is it like deep in a in a track neighborhood with a cul-de-sac you might think twice about yeah. turning that into a vacation rental yeah that's tough because i mean you know so a lot of so many of the people that that come to the Illinois empire real estate investment club and other investment clubs is that you know they're looking for a deal and once fun finally falls into their lap that meets their their purchasing criteria as far as like price wise goes you know they're so excited they just want to jump on it and get it but you know yeah like like you're saying they might be buying a property in the completely wrong place you know this is not the best airbnb or short-term rental this is in a neighborhood you know primarily made up of families or retirees or something like that this is not going to be the ideal spot for either party right it, it, you just don't want to upset the balance and you have to you know be cognizant of that yeah because the people again this goes back to the new out the nuances of your house the people coming in as a guest they don't know that your next door neighbor is a world war ii veteran and you know goes to bed at six o'clock at night you know they don't know that unless they you will find them. out oh well, yeah they'll find out i i heard one guy one guy has a has a phone a landline phone in the home in the in the airbnb and he, all the neighbors have access to that phone so if any of the neighbors have an issue, they can call that phone in the house and talk to whoever's staying in there oh, nice. during their stay. Okay. Be able to tell them you're being too loud or whatever, because it's always noise, you know. It, it, you know, it's funny though too. One thing we I have the the book, and we also have a website. And like I said, I can contradict myself on the coffee pots. Right, it's out there on the on the blog. Oh no, it will be out there on the blog because that was just dreamt up the the metal coffee pots. But we're all we're constantly coming up with. New material, and also I am Dear Airby. I don't know if you knew that. Dear Airby. I am Dear Airby. Okay. So people write in, they send questions, and I, I answer them honestly. And I try to break it into one or more of the chapters of the book mm -hmm. of how to think about and spin the answer and give them some, some good advice. But, uh, yeah, on, on the website you can you can read about all the, all the updates. And one thing we did is we, um, we tested and previewed a – because there's all kinds of software and hardware out there to help the industry, which is which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And one of them is called Noise Aware. And okay. it, they call themselves the smoke detector for noise. Okay. And that's what it is. It looks smaller than a smoke detector, but it measures decibel levels. So you can huh. put that in your house. And then there, they have a service. You pay a, a month uh, annual fee. And, and um, then you're kind of insured for noise. You're the first one to find out that they're over a certain decibel level. So there's... The, the industry is maturing is is what i'm trying to say yeah well that's good i mean because yeah that's, that's that's actually kind of cool i never even thought about something like that that's a very cool 
uh, and it was it was developed by a vacation rental homeowner. Yeah, who just wanted to probably because he got a bunch of bachelor parties he, in there or something. He got busted in his municipality, and uh, <laughs> that was that was the aha moment for him. Yeah, this other guy, uh, in addition to his uh, his tele his landline phone inside the house that all the neighbors have the phone number to, he also has a. There was an issue where he rented it out over Fourth of July weekend one year, and you know they were lighting off like the big mortar style fireworks. Whoever he had staying there, so you know it was like one of these things he never thought to add in there, but he had to add in like no fireworks. You know, like just these little things that happen over time. You know, where like when he first started doing this property, there was no thought of it being a firework. You know, that was not even part of the house rules. You know, but now it's part of the house rules among uh, like a large list of other things that are now part of it. That's a good point. You know, people are always like, well, do you have checklists for your housekeepers? I'm like, well, sort of, and I'm kind of hoping for some common sense. For, in, for instance, once the housekeepers left the house unlocked, mm-hmm. so do, do we really have to write down right. and lock the house when you leave? <laughs> I, I it's don't... funny how I had that same problem with the house we had out in Pacific Palisades. You know, they this the housekeeper, they went out there, they cleaned the house, and then we told them to put a lockbox on the house and set the combo to uh, whatever, whatever combo we gave them, and... <laughs> They set the combo in the lockbox and put it on the kitchen counter <laughs> and didn't put the key in it, you know, and left the house unlocked. We're like, <laughs> we show up like a week later. Fortunately, nobody broke in, you know, and I'm like, why is the house unlocked, you know, and what's the, what is this doing over here? And it was, it was just one of those things. I'm like, how, why, how did this even happen? You it's know, very unpredictable. Yeah. I, it's very, it beats int- me. It yeah. beats me. I'm sure that you've had stuff like that happen too, but. That's that's kind of where these rules come from. It's like after certain things happen, you like add to your list, right? Right, right. Like so, some of those things you've had happen, like obviously from your very first stay that you ever had. You said it was somebody like attending like a conference or something like that, right? I, I did, and I have to I have to tell you, I had a little bit of anxiety the very first renter. I was like, oh, she's in my place. Yeah. Oh, and then, then she asked me for an ironing board, and I thought I had one in the house, but I, I brought her one from the other house. I'm like, oh, she's asking for an ironing board. Yeah. It was very... But then I was fine with it. After, sh- after she came and left, then I'm like, I'm immune. Yeah. Yeah, no problems. Yeah, whatever they need, just bring it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I have no problem with someone staying, I mean... You know, the other ones, some of them were, you know, purchased specifically for right. vacation rentals. But, yeah, it's a little different. But I, I'm your detached home. is all I'm trying to say. And that, yeah, it probably takes a little bit of, a little bit for people to detach themselves from it because, you know, yeah, it's your house. And I, I, I'm, I'm blown away that this girl, the, the first one we went to, I was blown away then that she was comfortable with people coming in there. And, yeah, you know, she sounded, pre- she sounds pretty laissez-faire that she just let you in her bit. own pad and no, no rules or anything. Yeah. yeah. Supposedly she was like a musician and she travels the world and, you know. Whatever she's got places all over the all over the world. There oh wow! Little apartments that she keeps and stuff. So this is just her L.A. Hollywood apartment. Cool. You know, and you know, so she was, from what I understand, a very you know relaxed person. And of course, as soon as we get there, I knew nothing about her. But as soon as we get there, now I'm like curious who is this person. So we're just googling her, you know. And <laughs> I mean, what else are you gonna do? You're in this person's home. I as well know as much of them about them. It's, it's weird being as a guest in somebody's house like that, you know, because. If I'm ever staying as a guest in somebody's home, like I know them personally. And here's another thing, though: is it's a fine line between having a antiseptic hospital type of, <laughs> right. you know, boring type of house. I mean, just because you're not making it personalized, it doesn't mean it doesn't need to be sort of personalized for where you live, mm-hmm. the, the area, the environment, and very comfortable. I mean, always think about comfort. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because, you know, finding out about this going actually when because Stephen had talked to her after we after our stay and was sort of telling her some of these things that we issues, but like, you know, this girl actually would have been comfortable with us doing literally anything we wanted within her condo. She had detached herself, but it didn't feel that way for me when I came in as a guest. You know, so like if I needed to use some of her underwear, she probably would have been totally fine with it. Just throw it in the wash when you're done. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like that was that was what that, that was what her attitude was after the fact. But going into it and while we were there, it didn't feel that way. You know, so I think it's it's a very it's a very uh, important thing for a for a host to be able to create that feeling for a for a guest that you know this needs to feel like you you know you have full access of this facility here. This is your spot. Like you know, use it. This right. Is, and you can do everything here. Like anything that's restricted, you know, like if you don't want them stealing all your Tide Pods, for example, maybe put a lock on that cabinet and keep it locked. <laughs> or just keep buying them. 
keep just, buying them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's another solution, right? That's I don't know whether that's avoidance or what that is, but yeah, that wouldn't be good to just keep buying them. That, yeah, <laughs> that could break the bank eventually. Yeah, eventually. I was I was telling you before the show that I had a guy on uh, yeah you know, like three episodes ago, and he was saying you know that he put out all these K pod uh, K pods for the Keurig, and he put out all these Tide pods for the washing machine, and the first guest they had in there stole them all. You're thinking that these are just, you know, like shampoos in a hotel. You can just take them with you, <laughs> you know, and there's nothing saying he couldn't, but he filed a claim with Airbnb and he eventually got paid for it. Oh, wow. Because he, I mean, it was like a Costco size container of these. It wasn't like, wow. you know, a 10 pack, you know, <laughs> it was like a box of them. So. Yeah. The closest I've come to something like that is some, we leave condiments in the refrigerator, ketchup, mustard, okay. barbecue sauce. Sure different kinds of mustard we're fancy we've got oh yeah we've got yellow brown dijon and dijon yeah okay that, you yeah. got it covered you just need the honey mustard and you'll be good uh, you know <laughs> maybe it's the, the keto thing i'm not doing the honey mustard oh that's a good idea yeah and Stay I, want, away. I want everyone else to <laughs> yeah just to be like you yeah yeah suffer <laughs> and um but sometimes there's no condiments left but i didn't fl- file a claim on that yeah yeah but then, you know, we have to go out and get it. Sure. But we know, but that's part of the system, right? They know to buy the three types of mustard, barbecue sauce if you're feeling willing, yeah. and definitely some ketchup too. So that's, yeah, and you just put this on the checklist for, is it the cleaning crew that comes in and takes care of that? Yeah, or the property manager or me, or just someone's got to take care of it. Yeah. So are there, do you have like multiple checkpoints, like where um, as people come in, uh, you know, the guest stays, and then once they check out, is there like a process i have i have my own protocol so i actually i'm soup to nuts i'm handling everything i I know for instance uh this week my housekeeper in pasta robles i don't know why it's all about the that one place but anyway (laughs) the housekeeper is on a three-week break okay and she's got a she's got a great backup the backup's awesome too i mean they're they're a great crew and but the backup said you're out of paper towels so i linda the property manager i'm like Linda, we're out of paper towels. Yeah. And she's like, we are? I'm like, well, that's that's what I'm being told because I, I sent her out to the Smart and Final. Yeah. And I said, you know, look in the cabinets. There's there's no paper towels. She's like, no, there's no paper towels. And I said, she said, I need them. And I said, well, of course you do. And so to get, everyone needs paper towels, yeah. right? It's, it's very, very important to have paper towels. Right. And um, then the next day, Linda said, they are, we, they're still, there's a cabinet stuffed with paper towels. Huh. There's plenty of paper towels. I said, Linda, why don't we label the cabinets? Paper towels. So, yeah, so we've labeled all the cabinets now. <laughs> okay, so now you know where everything's stored. Yeah, because I don't know where, I never knew where it was either. I yeah. just opened every cabinet until I found what I needed. But yeah, yeah there's, we're yeah. living and learning. Sure. I mean, you know, and, and you can you could break this down to such a microscopic level because even, you know, I'm, I can be kind of like this too, like, you know, we have a business, we have a bunch of things, a lot of little assets floating around out there, like these headphones that we're wearing, these are assets of the company, like where do they get stored, who's, you know. Right. So we have, you know, we have cabinets for all the different, you know, things. And so at one point I wanted to put a, a piece of paper on the inside of the cabinet that not only showed what's supposed to be in there, but where it's supposed a to blueprint. be. blueprint. You know, basically, yeah. And I, I got inspired by this one time because I saw a grocery store uh, they had, somebody had left a piece of paper like sitting next to one of the cereal boxes you know that had exactly how that shelf is supposed to look okay you know it had you know cinnamon toast crunch frosted flakes you know it was like it was laid out exactly how it was supposed to look and that was on shelf two and you know here's shelf three like I was like ah oh, that's that, that's interesting I like the way that you know that's set up like if you go to home depot they have the app you can you know you're like i'm looking for this particular light bulb it'll tell you it's on aisle you know 15 shelf four and it tells you like basically the which which where to look to find that you'll, show, you'll thing. show me how to use that later right yeah sure awesome <laughs> <laughs> it helps uh, that's huge you know and like so the same thing goes where you know if you're looking for paper towels just having a cabinet labeled paper towels is a huge improvement over nothing you know because who knows? I mean, you can. I like the idea of having a checklist, especially for somebody doing that. No, and absolutely, it, and it's become a little bit. Um, I, I want to say organic again, but as far as the cadence of when I'm reaching out to guests and, and things like that, it's pretty mechanical on my part. Yeah, I'll set an alarm um, on my iPhone so it'll go off at like 6 p.m. on a day that something's happening the next day. So yeah. someone's either checking in or checking out the next day. 6 p.m. 
I figure that's kind of a safe time to contact folks and I'll, you know, I'll text them, mm -hmm. you know, hope you had a great stay and, um, you know, we can accommodate a late checkout if you need it. And what time are you thinking? And then they'll, they'll get back to me and they'll say, Oh, we'd love to take you up on it. Thank you. Right. And then I reply back with the simple checkout instructions, which are also on the listing and in our house guide. Right. But I just, you know, make it easy for them. Yeah. And, and so I try to give them the information before they, they ask me. That's, that's always the, the goal is you give them the information um, before they, they have to come to you for it. Right. Yeah. Cause most people, if left to their own devices, are going to probably do nothing, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. People are re very diligent, and they'll say, yeah, wh what's, what's the cleanup instructions? And then sometimes I do forget to set the alarm or, you know, whatever happens, and right. I, I don't. And then, then I tell them late. So, I mean, it's, but, yeah, no, people, I've had 98% awesome experiences. I yeah. Mean, everyone is, is on their, and, you know, they get reviewed, too. We get reviewed. Sure. They get reviewed. And uh, I think that's one of the benefits of, of being on a, a social app like, like Airbnb. And the other, the other platforms have reviews as well. So, that, I mean, um, whichever platform you use, if it's got a social aspect and a review aspect, yeah. that's a big plus. Sure, yeah. I mean, having that accountability you know, to yourself that if you ever want to use this platform again, if you have a one-star rating because you're a terrible guest, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're a, you're a nightclub or you're a bachelorette party promoter and you, you know, you just always have the worst reviews or something. Uh, yeah, I could see that happening. So yeah, it's, that's, a, that's definitely one of the reasons to use something like Airbnb. Exactly. But some other people like to use uh, uh, VRBO. Yeah, yeah, and it's very, very, very similar platforms. One thing that we're going to do, we're going to do a test. We're going to try out Booking.com. Okay. And they have a, no, I shouldn't say completely different model. They have a different model in the fact that when you book through Airbnb, Airbnb adds fees. Okay. So you never know exactly what your guest is paying. Okay. So they have a sliding metric I mean, calculator kind of scale, yeah, some, yeah yeah some some type of algorithm and um m maybe when they're low on money they make it higher <laughs> yeah no, just kidding who knows but, yeah who knows, who knows? <laughs> I, I don't know who made that up in the in the tenderloin there anyway <laughs> so um but the way booking.com is is the price that you put there is the price that the guest is paying but where they make it up is that they send you an invoice at the a month later Okay. For their commissions. I see. So in other words, you're paying later on the money, you know, probably around the same percentage that it actually gets absorbed from the guest fees and your Airbnb fees. Hmm. So it's, I want to try it out and I'm, I'm going to do a, a legitimate test where I see which one performs better yeah. and what, what books faster. So that's, I'm excited about trying that out. Yeah. It's you know, interesting. I mean, cause Whenever you talk about short-term rentals, the first thing out of people's mouths is Airbnb. It is, but I, from you know because I'm in the industry and go to these um, different events and and meet these folks. It's kind of a small circle of, of folks that are you know doing it. But there's right. you know there's lots of softwares. There's just a few different um, hardware companies, and there's only a few different platforms. But I've come to know um, them, and I, I want to test it out because I think you know I owe that for my knowledge yeah and, and for with, the industry yeah and with you know doing the the seminar that we're having our first one in february february 9th actually in corona yep yeah we're excited about that in our hometown right yeah exactly yeah, near, near the club <laughs> near the club yeah near the club man um <laughs> so yeah and um you know i for my own education i want to understand it because airbnb has been great to me oh okay wait i've got to tell you that <laughs> okay. there was a life-changing event with airbnb this year uh oh no very a good positive oh good thing. one okay uh, oh oh <laughs> late september i th i was pinching myself they're, they're like we've got this new payment program would you like to take advantage of it and the payment program is when you get a booking we'll pay you half three days later up to four months out wow and we'll charge you one percent huh. i'm like okay so you're going to improve my cash flow phenomenally for one percent done yeah yeah interesting oh it's awesome see i was gonna say like having multiple platforms on the in the in the in the space at the same time is good because 
you know, if you have VRBO and Booking.com and Airbnb and all the other ones that are out there that I'm probably not, I've probably never even heard of at this point, you know, having those, the more that they're in the space, the better the services are going to get for the hosts and for the guests. Yeah, it's probably true. You know, yeah. and it seems like, you know, the disclosure of fees, it's sort of like which way they're leaning. Are they leaning more host favoring or are they leaning more guest favoring? You know, if they want to disclose fees to the guests, you know, maybe it's they're looking more for the consumer protection side. Who knows? Maybe that's a better platform for the guests to be on. But if they're disclosing fees to the uh, to the hosts, maybe it's a little bit better for the host to be posting on that or something. I don't know. I mean, that's and that's why I want to test. That's why you want to test it exactly. And that's exactly. I think that's great. You know, yeah. you got to have these people out there constantly testing the uh, you know the systems and see where the better you know where the better systems lie because everyone's going to have their own probably thing they're really good at. Right. You, know, you can say, oh, booking.com is amazing. The, ch- the, the, the booking process is simple. I, and I don't know this to be true. I'm just saying this is a, you know, as an ad, for instance. But, you know, maybe booking.com is amazing at the, at the booking and part of it. And that platform itself, they put the listings out on, you know, booking.com and other hotel type of platforms. So I'm, I'm just curious yeah. to see how it pans out. Yeah, because I, I think I saw something because, like, you know, you've heard of Trivago, I'm sure. Yes. Trivago, you know, like, they, I, I think they're showing stuff on from booking.com, which would be like vacation rentals. So if you're looking for a hotel to stay at, for example, in Palm Springs, you're going to get all the hotel listings from Expedia and all these other ones. And then you're going to see from Booking.com maybe some houses that are around there, condos exactly. or whatever also, which, you know, I, I, I can't imagine there's people that have never heard of a vacation rental at this point, but I'm sure they're out there. And, you know, another it's it, there's another thing where, you know, you might go on to Expedia or something like that and you're looking to get a hotel and you never even thought to rent a house. You know, this this has to come into play for large families because most hotels are not designed for larger families if you want to all be in the same room. Right, so, right, or, or cooking and, and right. things like that. Right. Yeah, if you have an extended stay or something like that. Right. Like, you know, most people aren't going to be in a hotel for a week, although it happens, I'm sure. But, you know, if you're going to be in there for a week, you don't want to eat out for every single meal. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to save a little money and cook inside, you know. And, and there's a convenience factor. True. You know, just being able to grab something to eat. Yeah, coffee, for example. You yeah. Know, wake up in the morning, you don't have to get all made up to go down and get some coffee <laughs> somewhere, you know. <laughs> How do you get made up for your coffee? Oh, I, I actually, I don't drink much coffee. Pro- oh, point. so you don't have to get made up. Yeah, I gave up coffee about a year and a half ago. What, man. You know, I was having some today, like, you know, sometimes I do have a little bit of coffee, just, but it's like in the afternoon. Okay. You know, and uh, yeah, this time, it's, but when I did, I would just, yeah, wake so up. So wait, you gave up coffee, more for me. Yeah, exactly. More for you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's not easy. It's not easy kicking a caffeine high habit. You know, that's a tough one. You know, it's, it's headaches. You get headaches and, ugh. No, I, I did it once. Good. I weaned myself off of it, though, slowly. See, cold turkey. That's how I like to do it. Just, oh, you know, man. You're <laughs> just brave. Stop. It was tough, but, you know, it worked. My wife and I both did it at the same time. It, okay. You know, it worked out pretty well. We both kicked it and... You know, now it's like coffee only when we need it, and it actually works, which okay. is great. <laughs> All right, and you're both irritable at the same time. <laughs> no, no, it's pretty good. You know, wake up not feeling like I need it. It's it's different. It's very yeah. different. It's like no, a I, different world. You know? Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what I was going. With I'll that, get around to it. Yeah, one day I'm just gonna beat it into you. Just well, I I told you I'm I'm keto now, right? Right. Yep. And I'm doing January. Yep. Right. So, so I'm dry, dry in January. Ah, oh, so, tough. I'm doing it too. But I'm still having coffee. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I a, have a line. The line is coffee. <laughs> right, exactly. I had a little coffee today. You know, that's why I'm so energetic right now. Cool. Yeah, you know, but uh, it's not the topic. It's not. It's not the topic. But <laughs> hey, we're talking the about the topic's not making you energetic. You know what? It is actually. I mean, because I oh the show's great. I have a lot of people out here, but it's it's good to have somebody that like you know you have a lot of experience, a lot of stories, and you know I'm, I'm sure you'd love to share more stories too. But because that's what people like to hear is like you know the war stories and all the things that have gone wrong. As well as the things that have gone right. But, you know, I, I know a lot of people learn more from the things that go wrong. No, and I do. Yeah. And constantly. Because whenever things go right, you're like, of course it went right. I, I did it like that for a specific reason, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like you said, systems and, and actually putting it into the z- design, into the DNA of, of yeah. the project. So, Yeah, and, you know, it, I, I really appreciated the first chapter of the book. I, and, and like, because the first chapter, you know, the chapters get smaller. As, as the book goes on. That's called laziness? I wouldn't call it laziness because it doesn't need that much meat. Okay. You know what I mean? And your book, it really is meat. There's not, a, there's not much fluff in here. I mean, you, like, I, I've, I'm sure you've read, you know, a billion personal development books as I've done. Yes. You know, and like 75% of the book is fluff 
and it says the same you can do it kind of thing in a hundred different ways they say it but then there's you know 25 percent of the book is actual things you could do to you know be more organized or whatever it is that you need to do that that book's trying to help you accomplish and so you don't get much meat but your book's like 95 percent meat and you know five percent fluff you can do it which is good no i, 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 I appreciate that and <laughs> Yeah, I hope that it's interesting. Actually, my most important thing is I have I had a I don't know how many friends read it, and I'm like, did you laugh? Yeah, I did laughed. anything make you laugh? Okay, good. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. all I care about, really. No, I laughed a few times in there. Okay, like, good. You know, you used uh, what was it? There was one that's standing out in my mind. You'd used a word in there, uh, and it was it, I don't know, it was just funny how you would describe. You'd use this word. Oh, I mean, I sure can't remember it right now, <laughs> but uh, it was towards the end. I remember because I read it today. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I don't know. It was like, you know, yeah, you made me laugh. It was funny. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's lighthearted. Some of it's tongue in cheek, right? I mean, yeah. you just want to, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's not nuclear science, but to some people who've never been in real estate, you know, like you came from the it world, right? I, so. I did. And I, but also I've had a life in real, real estate, estate investing too. and, and flipping Yeah, so back in the day, not, not the recent run right. up, but, but it doesn't change much. Probably not. Paint, you know, paint and carpet. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can still do those things. To <laughs> okay. house. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but they, uh, yeah, it was for, for some people coming in, like they're working in a completely different industry. And I understood. There's, there's probably people and, listening right now that don't. And, and that's why I wanted to make the book, um, f like a fresh perspective on yeah. really what is it? What are the basic things? What are the gotchas? Yeah. And I, I did just want to break it down. Sure. And once I came up with the idea of putting it into the 10 steps, then I was like, okay, this is going to be easy to finish this book. Yeah. yeah. And it, you know, I think, I think it was laid out very, very well. The, uh, the only thing I would say is that for the person that maybe doesn't know anything about real estate right now, you know, there's 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 a slight learning curve you need to have. You need to have the real estate 101 before you can jump into this book. So you need to understand, you know, escrow and you know, like just some basic stuff on how to purchase a property. Sure. You know, how do you finance it? That's not something that's covered in the book. No, not at all. No, no, no. You know, yeah, there's probably an assumption that you've purchased a house exactly that you have some familiarity with real estate correct so, correct you know, it's uh but yeah like i said it's a good book and um you know but you got to have some basic knowledge of real estate before you jump into this which you probably should anyway you if should you get, if you right. do any kind of real estate investing. absolutely and, and all the disclaimers you said at the beginning double yeah fully apply <laughs> fully apply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh so anyway i guess we only got a couple minutes left so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna, why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit of how people can get this book it is available on all the different platforms. So it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Books a Million. Books, see? Books a Million. Never heard of it. It's <laughs> regional. I think it's, it's definitely in the South. It might be in Texas. Okay. So, if, but it, they're online too. So the book's called Master Vacation Rentals. Yeah, uh, Be Master Vacation Rentals. And you're Jeff Pierce. I'm Jeff you're Pierce. You're the author. I'm the author. And you can come to our website, which is www. Mm -hmm masteroffvacationrentals.com okay yeah and then you got a, a thing coming up a seminar you're gonna be teaching we do we do month. it's it's in corona at the staybridge suites okay on um february 9th it's a saturday okay and you will get a certificate whether you pass my trick questions or not on the quiz okay yeah if you're if you're there and um at least keep your eyes open and for the majority well, no, of if, it. if you're listening and you understand some of it and you can argue with the the answers that i give and uh, we'll give you a certificate, which is actually a numbered certificate. Okay. Yeah. So Very you cool. Can, you can earn that. Okay. So that's how do people get information for that? Uh, come to our website. We okay. Have, so we have all tickets on. There. on and um, for the listeners here, we have a promo code called Special. So if you type in Special promo code, you'll get fifty percent off the wow. early bird pricing, which will be fifty dollars. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. So uh, go ahead and. I guess we'll see you all again next week. Check out meetup.com for the Illinois Empire Real Estate Investment Club. We'll see you all again next week. Take care, everyone.